Hello everybody, I'm back with a wrap up of the N-Scale Mini Layout Project, which I began about a year and a half ago. This layout project was started in 2014, uh, in the middle of the year, and it's now the end of 2015, and things are pretty much at a completed state. You can see from the track diagram and the actual uh, pictures on the right hand side that things follow the diagram pretty closely, besides some minor changes like the orientation of the siding in the lumber yard on the top right hand portion being straight now instead of angled, and the uh, building locations being different in the upper level. Um, things are, for the most part, pretty close to what I had originally planned to do. Now the layout project, the layout itself again is two by three feet in size, mostly foam construction with uh, you know wood framing and, and so forth, but lightweight, uh, easy to carry around. Um, it is all Kato Unitrack. There are a couple of industrial sidings that uh, allow for some switching operations, but also continuous loops on both the top, bottom and top level for continuous running. And all the controls are DC. They are built into an external control box which allows you to move it wherever you need to move it and not have to worry about, you know, having the controls blocked by, you know, a wall or whatever, depending on how you have the layout oriented on a table or, or you know, bookshelf or whatever. Um, now, the, the radiuses are fairly tight, but they are large enough, barely, to allow for a GP38-2 to run and pull some 50 and 60 foot freight cars without having to worry about, you know, any any major uh, operation problems. Um, I had to I had to worry about clearances and that kind of thing in the design of the scenery and, and and that kind of thing. But but things work out very well. I haven't had any problems operating, and so for the most part, uh, things uh, work quite reliably. Now here are some pictures that I'll show you here first, and then we'll look at a little bit more of the summary of the costs and so forth after this. In terms of cost, the project ended up being a lot more than I had originally planned on. I planned on $750 for total cost. I ended up being over $1,200 for everything not including the motor power and rolling stock. Now my out-of-pocket cost was quite a bit less than that because I had a lot of the items already on hand, like the track for the most part, um, a lot of the scenery items I already had and was able to you know, reuse. Um, I also had you know, a lot of the rolling stock already as well, and so I didn't actually spend that much money out of pocket, and I probably spent closer to that 750 mark out of pocket to build everything. But again, if you're paying retail price for everything you know, new, uh, you know, as I built them in this, in this project, then that's about what, what you would end up somewhere in that $1,200 to $1,300 range for most of the items that I used uh, without any kind of discounts that you might be able to get or coupons or whatever from these retailers. And again, this is a pretty much the ending point of this layout project. I will likely have some more videos showing various new details or that kind of thing. But uh, things are, for the most part, at a more or less completed state at this point. And I am going to be starting a new project shortly on a 1x5 foot or 1x6 foot HO scale switching layout um, uh, fairly shortly in the next several weeks. So I'll have a new video series on that once I get started. But anyway, thanks for watching this video series. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope, hopefully it uh, provided some useful tips here and there. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll wrap up here with a video or some videos of the uh, layout to end things out. Thanks a lot. Bye.